Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this tutorial is going to show you how to paint a mason jar with sparklers and an American flag, a fun patriotic theme painting you can do for Memorial Day or the 4th of July. And we're going to go ahead and get started with a canvas that has been painted black. So this was a mess up painting, it's an 11 by 14 inch painting. I just took black paint, so just Mars black paint, water it down slightly, and then use any brush to just cover it. Um, the black gives really good coverage over the canvas and you're good to go. So we're gonna start out by doing a background and I have two colors on this. I have cobalt blue and titanium white. I'm also using this three quarter inch flat wash brush. And I'm gonna start out with the color cobalt blue. So I'm gonna load my brush, the tip of it, with some of the cobalt, kind of brush it out on my palette a little bit. And we're gonna start in the middle. This is a, a radiating background with blue strokes that are going in a circular direction, um, starting in the middle. And I'm not trying to cover up all that black. I want a lot of that black showing through. So we're not doing solid blue, we're just doing circle strokes. And if that blue paint runs out and runs dry, that's kind of the effect that we're going for. So some areas are gonna look more opaque and drier. Some are gonna look a little more translucent and we just kind of wanna have a variety of both bright and dark. But we're just gonna keep using the full width of the brush, painting in a circular direction. So radiating strokes going in circles. And we're just gonna do this on the entire canvas. So remember we wanna leave a lot of that black showing through and do a variety of brightness and darknesses depending on how your paint runs dry. So you don't wanna overload your brush with too much paint. Um, I'm just loading the tip of it with the paint and I'm brushing it out on the palette. And when you brush it out on the palette like that and make sure that the brush is not overloaded with too much paint because too much paint on that brush is going to make that blue super thick and will cover all that blue all that black in the background. So just keep going uh, all the way up in the corners. Your circles are gonna eventually run off the canvas and that's okay. And I'll leave a little bit of a gap on the bottom. If you want your blue to go on the bottom too in a circular direction, you can. But I know the bottom is gonna be a grassy area so I don't necessarily need to cover that blue on the bottom. So you can kind of estimate where your horizon line is going to be, about three inches from the bottom of the canvas. So just keep filling it up. Remember to leave a lot of that black showing. It's a nighttime scene, so the blue is not very strong in this. I'll kind of hold it in different directions so you can see what that looks like with my light hitting the blue differently. And then when you're done with that, we are going to do the stars that are in the background. So I'll be doing toothbrush stars again for this painting. If you don't want to do the toothbrush thing, you can actually just load white on the brush and flick the brush, but I like the effect that the toothbrush gives. So what I usually do with my splatter paint toothbrush is I take my finger with the water and add the water to the brush. Then I take my finger, dip it in the white and apply it evenly on that. Do a little test. See right there, that was a little bit too watery. I can tell right away that was gonna be way too watery. So I added more white in there. So you wanna get a nice amount of thickness of white and you flick the brush all over and you'll get a variety of different stars all throughout your background. So fill that up as much as you would like to see and then we're gonna go on to the next step. So we're gonna load our palette with the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, which is a dark green. You can use any dark green, doesn't have to be that exact color. And I'll be using this angle brush for this grass. So angle brushes are nice for painting grass. I do grass with round brushes too, so whatever you feel comfortable with, but this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. And I'm gonna load it in the water, and I'm going to load it into the green. So there's some layers in this grass. We have darker grass in the background and the grass is kind of swaying away from the mason jar that's gonna be in the middle. So I'm gonna start on the right side, kind of about two inches above the bottom of the canvas and I'm gonna paint grass blades that are angling towards the right. 
So when you use the angle brush, you want to have the top point go in the opposite of where you're doing your stroke. So for example, I'm having my grass blades sway to the left on this side, the angle, the top angles facing towards the right when I'm painting towards the left, if that makes sense. And the grass blades are going opposite on each side because they're swaying differently. Um, remember that mason jar is going to be right there in the middle. So that's the first layer of grass. Our second layer is going to be a lighter color, and I'll show you what we're going to do here. I'm just going to add a few more grass blades. Um, do a variety of heights in there. Some of them are short, some are longer. I did it all the way across because the mason jar is going to cover that area. We may see some of the grass blades showing through the glass of the jar, so that'll look really nice. But I'm just going to do a variety of um, long and short ones. The longer ones are more towards the edges of the canvas. I'm not doing any longer ones in the middle because that's just going to make our mason jar painting a little bit more complicated if we did that. But we're going to do another layer of grass here, and I'm going to go ahead and mix white into my green to make kind of a, a lighter version of that green. And that lighter version is going to be our next layer of grass. So I'm going to start this layer below our darker layer. And same thing, the grass is swaying opposite from each other on each side, but do a variety of heights. So when you mix, you can see there's some longer blades and that white really helps to get that green to show up nicely. If it seems too bright for you, you can grab some more of the darker green and mix some of that darker green into that lighter green to get some variety in there. But we don't want to cover up all of our dark green that's way in the back. So you want to have that kind of still show through. But variety of heights, uh, make sure that they're angling opposite from each other and make sure you leave the gap in the middle. So I'm not going to do the bright green blades in the middle where the uh, horizon line would be. I'll do some on the bottom because our mason jar isn't going to be resting on the bottom edge of the canvas. It's going to be a little bit higher up. So I'll do grass blades going all the way across to the bottom of the canvas. But very important, we don't want the long blades in the middle. We want to keep that middle pretty blank for the most part so that we have enough space to work with when we do our glass mason jar drawing slash painting. So I'm just going to keep adding more and more grass blades, variety of color, variety of angles, longer ones towards the edges of the canvas, shorter ones in the middle, and kind of angle that, show you in the light. So for the most part, you wanna fill up all of the, have a pretty dense, amount of grass but at the same time we still want some of that dark of the canvas showing through we don't want to cover it completely with green because the dark in the canvas is going to still give some contrast with our grass so that is it for now I can go back later after we do the glass mason jar to add more grass blades but we're gonna go ahead and do the drawing of the mason jar if I take my hand and rest it on the bottom of the canvas, so my palm is pretty close to the bottom edge of the canvas and my fingers are stretched out, that is how tall our mason jar is going to be, right there where my middle finger is, a little bit higher. And um, so I'm going to be using a white chalk pencil. I'm going to do a horizontal line about where that is. And relatively that line is right there in the middle of the canvas. So if you didn't want to use your hand, you can just figure out where the center of your canvas is. So I drew a very thin horizontal oval part for the rim. And I'm going to do the same thing. So another one below it. So the two little pieces for the rim. I'm going to do little marks going vertical downwards. And then I'm going to start forming the shape of this jar. So this side is going to curve outwards and curve down. So it's going to be kind of rounded on the left and right side. The tricky thing about drawing mason jars is making them symmetrical on both sides. So you want to do your best to make that line that you did on the left symmetrical to the one on the right. And then the bottom of the jar, the corners, bottom corners of it kind of curve, but then the bottom piece is not completely flat. It just bends slightly downwards. 
it's not as straight as the, the top part of the rim. And then I'm just making this part a little bit darker, trying to make this a little bit more symmetrical on this side. And we can always adjust our drawing when we go and paint this in. This chalk pencil is erasable with water and a, a or eraser. And then that curve on the inside of the jar, so just do an upside down curved line on the inside of that jar. And I'm gonna do one more rim. So this one's got three rims instead of two. So another rim at the top. Then I'm gonna draw the sticks that are in the jar. So we have two sparklers and an American flag. So three sticks. And I'm gonna start in the middle and do a diagonal line. So this one's gonna be for the flag. And you can angle these differently if you want them to go in a different direction. But this flag stick, start in the middle of the jar and I'm gonna draw it upwards. So I'm just drawing a diagonal line. And of course this can be adjusted later when we paint this in. And so it's just nice to kind of draw it out to vision where it's going to go. So when we paint it in, we kind of have more of a direction on where we're going and we're not just painting aimlessly. And then, so there's our other stick. And then this one is gonna go this way. So we kind of wanna be careful because we know these sparklers are gonna be rounded at the top and we don't want them to overlap the flag too much and we want each of them to have their own space. So you really kind of have to vision how that's going to be. And I'm just going to draw my lines for the sparklers, but I'm not going to go into detail with this drawing. I'm just drawing radiating diagonal lines around that stick so I can envision where this sparkler is going to be and to make sure that they're not overlapping each other too much. That they're all each going to have their own space. So that's what I did there. And then I did my flag. So the flagpole actually has a little circle at the top and I'm just going to make this line a little bit thicker. And then I could sketch out my flag. Um, the flag is kind of draping down. So I'm going to draw a wavy line going downwards. And then this piece is going to go vertical. And again, that wavy line is going downwards. And if I want to, actually, I, I will, I'll go ahead and draw that square piece on the flag. But you don't have to do the stars or the stripes unless you want to, unless that makes you feel more comfortable. But I'm going to just leave that as a basic drawing. So now I have my composition down and I'm ready to start filling it in. And we're going to do the sticks first. So everything that's inside the mason jar has got to be painted before the glass mason jar gets painted, which means that we got to paint our sticks. And for the sticks, I used burnt sienna. And... Uh, Mars black and also titanium white if you need to freshen that up. So the stick is going to be a combo of the black and the brown and the white. It's night so the stick is dark but also it'll have a lot of highlights because there's a lot of light going on in this painting. So I just started with the brown and I'm, this is a round brush. So this is a number four round brush and all I'm doing is painting those stick lines that I drew with the white. And I'll I'm going to add some more detail to these sticks too, but know that you can also simplify this and not go into detail. So if you don't want to highlight the sticks, you don't have to. Um, so I'm going to grab a little bit of white on my brush and make that brown a little bit lighter with that white. And I'm just going to loosely add that on there, but not on everything. So about right there where that light would be hitting it when we paint those sparkler lights in. Grab some Mars Black and this bottom part, just going to loosely outline the bottom part a little bit darker. So this is what I mean by detail. If you don't want to do these highlight, low light details on the sticks, if you just want to just do a brown line and that's it, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to go into that many details with this. Just gonna take some of that white and loosely outline parts of this. By loosely, I just mean that that line doesn't stay consistent throughout. I'm holding the brush very lightly and picking it up and then holding it down lightly so that it doesn't go consistently all throughout. So for the flag, I did gray instead of brown. So I'm just mixing black and white on my palette to make a gray and I'll do my circle and then I'll do my line. I decided this line was gonna go more at an angle towards the left and that's okay because we can erase the chalk line. So when you do chalk drawings and you paint things in, if you don't go exactly to where your line was drawn, that is okay. You can erase the chalk. 
So this one angled more towards the left and then I grabbed my eraser, so just a regular pink eraser, we'll erase that line. And then I'll get a little bit of black on the tip of my brush and loosely outline the right side of it to give that line a little bit more variety. So we're done with the sticks and we are going to move on to the fun part of this painting, painting the sparklers. And with these sparklers, I used the number four round brush. I'm gonna start with the one on the right, so the red one. I'm gonna freshen up red and white on my palette and I'm gonna load the tip of my brush into the white and start in the middle. So with these lines, I'm gonna start at that center point, which is the tip of the stick, and I'm gonna drag my brush outwards. Start in the middle, drag outwards. You wanna do a very fast stroke when you drag it outwards. You wanna release the pressure really quick as you get to the tip of it, and that'll get your line to go to a point. And you wanna vary the lines. So some are shorter, some are longer, some are thinner, some are a little bit thicker, and you just wanna make sure, for the most part, all the lines are thin and they go to a point. So to really get that line to go to a point, you're releasing the pressure super fast to allow that line to sort of fade away and go to a point. So we're gonna be doing lots of layers for this sparkler. This is only the first layer. Our second layer, we're gonna grab some red, kind of drag it on your palette. That red mixed with that white a little bit on the palette, and that's okay. And I'm just gonna kind of go back over these lines, but I'm not gonna to try to cover up all that white necessarily. Uh, that white is allowing that red to be super bright and opaque, but we don't wanna cover all of our white lines, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna take the red, and I'm gonna drag it out, and it is, it's also creating their own lines too. So I'm not necessarily covering the white lines that I created. So for some of, some of those are covering the white lines, some of them are going in between and making their own path. And again, variety. So some are thicker, some are a little bit thinner. They all go to a point. Some are longer, some are shorter. So we're just gonna keep building this sparkler in layers here. That is our second layer, and we're gonna keep going with this. Keep adding more detail and more layers. So I'm gonna go back over with some more red. Taking that, dragging it out. And some of the pieces do not necessarily have to start in the middle. We can have pieces that are hanging out on the edges in between some of the lines. Add some white in there so that they looks a little bit brighter. So on my palette, I mixed the red and the white together. You can see how that makes it brighter. The red doesn't show up against the dark background very well without the white. But those pieces are not attached to the middle. They're kind of hanging off and doing their own thing. Some flyaway pieces. But kind of the same concept with the strokes, starting out a little bit hard and releasing the pressure to go to a tip, making variety. And then some of those pieces are hanging downwards and have little uh, angled shape, angled lines on the tips of them. Um, for those small little detail lines, you can grab a small round brush for that. So I'm actually gonna grab my five zero round brush. So this is a tiny brush that will allow you to create some very, very fine details in here. So you can do diagonal lines on the tips of some of those fire lines, sparkler lines, the little asterisk, little X. Um, you can have them be a nice variety. So three or four lines, you can have them go all the way in a circle or just halfway and just keep adding them on there, different areas, so that adds more detail. Another detail you can do with these sparklers are little dots, so in between some of the lines, you can just do three or four little dots that are kind of in the middle. Maybe you can do some more um, of the, the line, actual lines in the middle with the thinner lines, so you get some th really, really th fine, thin lines in there. So just keep going in there with more details and it just keeps adding to that sparkler.
You may notice in the final picture that there's a super bright yellow layer in the middle and we can't do that quite yet until this red white combination dries. So um, keep in mind that that is going to happen later on in this painting. But I'll, I'm just going in there and doing more layers, more little uh, flyaways, more little dots. So just keep going until your heart's content. Don't go too crazy. You don't want to fill it up all the way to where there's no sky showing through anymore. But when you are done with the red one, we are going to do the blue one next. So the blue one is the cobalt blue and titanium white. So freshen up your cobalt, freshen up your titanium white if you need to. And same thing, start with white, start in the middle, use the round brush and do radiating strokes that go to a point going all around in a circle using just that tip of the round brush. So that paint is right there on the tip of that brush. This, part's, this part of the video is speeding up just slightly, but uh, press pause if you need to, but it is also the same exact thing that we did with the red one. So starting with the white, make it go around in a circle, nice variety of um, lines. Grab your cobalt and do your layer of cobalt blue but remember we don't want to cover all that white just go in a circle um, have some of the blue create their own lines and some of the blue covers the white lines so just a variety of that blue and um, if you need to mix a little bit of that blue with the white on your palette sometimes it's helpful to make, make it so it's brighter, especially since it's the same color as that background. So if we really want it to show up, mixing some white in there is gonna make enough contrast so that blue shows up against that blue background. Sometimes it helps to twist your brush when you're loading it and that distributes the paint to the very tip of the brush. And it also when you twist it as you're loading the paint, it makes it so the bristles all go to a point and they're not spread around because if the bristles are all to a point you'll be able to create a thinner line than if the bristles were spread out a little bit and then you can do your little flyaways with the titanium white just be careful where our blue and red are overlapping we don't want to get it too messy right there so I didn't do too many details on the blue in that area where they're overlapping and then you grab your little detail brush and do your detail work with the white. So you do your little dots and your little flyaways. I'm gonna go silent here while I finish up the detail work of the blue sparkler. Go ahead and check your red firework sparkler and see if it's dry. For the most part, if it's dry, we're gonna go ahead and add a super bright white layer in the center. And this is going to allow us to create the bright yellow layer next. So I'm gonna take my round brush and I'm gonna do the white strokes in the middle again, but I'm not gonna go all the way out. I'm only gonna go a little bit outwards in the middle. And by doing that, it's gonna make the center of that sparkler super, super bright white. So go ahead and do that. I can maybe go, may have it go out a little bit longer, but for the most part, you don't wanna cover all that red because that defeats the purpose of painting our sparkler red. You just wanna make sure you add a lot of white right there in the middle and already it's allowing that to be very, very bright white in the middle. We'll be doing a layer of yellow over there, but we want the white to dry first. I'm gonna let the blue side dry a little bit longer because I don't want too much of that blue mixing with the white. So I'm just gonna go in and add some more details over here on the left one, allowing our blue one to dry 
give it a little bit more time to dry before we do those super bright white. So when you're ready for the blue side, if it's dry, you can always get a hair dryer and dry it real quick. For, but for the most part, it should be dry. And then you're going to do the same exact thing. Um, rinse the brush off, get all that red off the brush. Do white, so load your brush in just the white, and do your center bright white sparkler. So start in the center, and then do your strokes going outwards, going in a circle from the center and stroking outwards, uh, making sure that center is super bright and white. And then we're going to do our yellow. So this is primary yellow that I'm loading my palette with. And you only need a little bit. And then there's still white on my brush. That's okay. I loaded the tip of it in the yellow. And I'm going to be very careful with this yellow. We don't want the yellow to take over and make the sparkler turn yellow all the way. We want to add the yellow just in the center. Of course, it's going over that white, but I'm not covering all of the white. A lot of that white is still showing through. A lot of that yellow is creating its own lines, but some of that yellow is going over some of the white lines. And you can see how it created that effect with that bright yellow in the middle. Um, with the blue one, you just wanna be careful, make sure all that blue is dry because we don't want it to be green in the middle. We're gonna just go ahead and do the same thing. Do your yellow lines just in the middle, radiating lines going outwards. And we have our super bright sparklers. I'm gonna go in and add some more details to the red one, especially. I wanted to bring out some of this red. So rinse the brush, loaded it into the red, and I'm just gonna do a few more red lines on our red sparkler here. And then I'm gonna do a few crazy flyaways here. I'm gonna get kind of brave here. So um, longer lines, but also I'm gonna grab some white and do a very long piece with a bigger flyaway little edge to it. And I'll do another one on here. So a longer, brighter piece. That one is really large. So it just kind of adds to the sparkler effect. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the stripes on the flag. So this is the Cad, Cad Red Medium Hue color and the round brush. So I'm just gonna do my stripes and they're gonna go with the, the line that I drew for, so they're gonna be wavy. And I'm just taking the, the red and making them parallel to each other, but also wavy. Uh, parallel to the the line of the drawing and I'll just fill this up assuming that that doesn't have the right number of red and white stripes it kind of folded on the bottom so we don't really see all of it we don't have to go in super detail with that flag unless you want to so there's my red um, I highly recommend that you let the red dry first before doing the white because then the white and the red are going to run together and not look very pretty so let that red dry and then for the blue area mix cobalt blue with white so about equal amounts of the blue and the white together on your palette to get the blue to be brighter and that'll allow it to stand out against the dark background and go ahead and paint in the blue square area of the flag. So just go ahead and paint that in a solid color. You can even grab some more um, darker blue and have it kind of get darker towards the bottom if you like that color variation or you can just keep it the same solid color. And remember the flag is wavy and draping down, so the blue square is not necessarily a square, it's just kind of obstructed, askewed 
in a different shape. And then we're going to let that dry before we do the white stars. And the red stripes are not dry yet either, so we're not going to do the white stripes just yet. I'm going to move on and start doing the detail of the mason jar glass. We did the drawing, but now we got to paint over our chalk drawing, our chalk line drawing. So I'm going to double load my round brush in blue and white. So both blue and white on the tip of my palette. And I'm going to start at the rim. So I'm just painting over what I drew with the chalk line. And I'm going to vary that blue and white. So it's going to um, be somewhat brighter in some areas and that little bit more blue in other areas. But I'm just working on the rim right now. So just taking the brush and outlining the rim piece. So this piece. It's going to go down and then it's going to go horizontal. So these are very, very intricate lines. Just make sure you're using that tip of the brush. If you need to use that 5-0 round brush, that detail brush, you can use that one if you feel comfortable with the more smaller brush. And then we'll do our other rim line piece very loosely. I'm not holding the brush very heavy handed. I'm holding it very loosely so my lines are nice and thin. And same thing with the shape of our mason jar. So outline the outer edge of it with the blue. So I grabbed a little bit more blue on my brush to get some variety in there. So it's not just solid white all throughout. We have some blue in there. And I'm just loosely outlining the outer edges of the mason jar and it's going to go down and pretty much going over my a drawing that I did and it's going to go down and curve. I'll go ahead and outline my bottom piece so very very loosely. And then we have our center, or not our center, our bottom piece, that curve right there. I added a little bit more of the cobalt blue to my brush than the white, so it's not as bright. Then I'm going to do some of the reflection. So this is still the blue white on my brush. I'm going to do a reflection over on the left. So I pressed pretty hard on my brush to make a thick stroke like that. And this piece is going to go kind of angler, ang angled upwards and do more reflections on e pretty much each corner. I know they're not corners, but you know what I mean, each <laughs> corner of the mason jar. Um, so just a, a mark that kind of goes in a per parallel direction to the shape, kind of contouring that shape of the mason jar. And then I'm gonna do a dry brush technique next. So with this technique, we really don't want a lot of paint on our brush. So wipe, load it in the white and wipe it off with the towel. And you're going to do very, very light strokes here. Be very careful because if there's too much paint on your brush, this is just going to ruin your mason jar. Um, but not a lot of paint on your brush. Dry brush, you're going to kind of curve it. It's going to give it form when you do a curved stroke like that. Um, kind of curve almost in an oval shape and then dry brush strokes in the middle. The middle dry brush strokes are super, super dry, so not even bright at all. And I'm going to go back and do my rim as well with more of that cobalt color. So I'm just going back in there and doing darker in the rim area. Do another lighter piece. So there is our mason jar. That dry brush effect really gives it that pretty glass look, especially with that dark, dark background. Um, what I'm doing here is I actually grabbed some Mars Black on the tip of my brush there. And I'm just going to add very, very small, loose lines in there. This is just going to give the edge of our glass some more color variation, some darks in there. And I'm not outlining everything because if I did, then I would, I would lose the entire outline and we wouldn't see the jar anymore. But just a few black lines 
very close to those white lines. They don't even have to cover the white lines. They can be like right next to the white line, but it gives our jar some darker um, parts of the jar that would be reflecting. And then a few more white marks in there. You just want to be careful not to overdo all your highlights on the jar because too many and it's just really going to take away from the effect because it's glass. It should be see-through for the most part. That sky should be showing through that jar and there's not a lot of color applied to the jar. I am going to do the word next. So the ball that is on the mason jar. Um, this is done with cobalt blue and titanium white. So I mixed equal parts together. I'm using a round brush and it may be helpful to write this out with chalk first if you don't feel comfortable just making a cursive B-A-L-L. -L. If you're not comfortable with your cursive or writing, draw it with the chalk first and when, and when you like the way that looks then you can go back over it and do your paint. So I did my first layer with the B-A-L-L -L with the darker with the cobalt blue mixed with white. And I did a second layer with white over it just to brighten that up. So the white lettering is not going over all that blue. There's still a lot of that blue showing through. It's just like a second layer. And that should be it for my mason jar. I'm just gonna add a few more brighter light uh, highlights to the corners of the jar. And that should be it. Like I said, the more you keep working it, the more less it's going to be glass effect showing through. Um, there is a simp a really quick thing I would like to do here is I'm, gra I'm grabbing the yellow. And I'm just going to make a few little yellow marks just on some of the edges here. Um, so our sparklers would be reflecting on that jar a little bit. So they would be reflecting a little bit of yellow. Not too crazy. Just a few little yellow marks here and there gives it that extra fine piece of detail. And now our stripes from the flag should be dry by now. I'm going to go ahead and do the white stripes next. So freshen up some titanium white on here. I'm using my number four round brush and I'm just going to paint the white stripes in between each of the red stripes. Again, this flag is not super detailed. The number of stripes are probably, or yeah, they're incorrect number of stripes, but that's okay because we're going to assume that the bottom part is kind of folded and we don't see some of the stripes are missing that's okay and then for the the stars again we don't have to do 50 stars unless you want to do exactly 50 stars it's up to you i'm just going to do little white dots um kind of alternating from each other on that blue piece so there's our flag and little highlight on the top circle a little bit of white to make this um stick of that stand out a little bit, give it some more brightness, contrast. What I would like to do next is add some more grass on the bottom, some grass that may be overlapping our jar. So I'm gonna go back to my angle brush and get some green and white mixed together to get that brighter grass color. But just on the bottom, I'm gonna do smaller grass blades and um, some of them are going to be overlapping the bottom of the mason jar. I don't want my grass blades to be super high because I don't wanna cover all that work that I did on the jar, but it also allows it to make it look like that jar is sitting in the grass because we have some overlapping going on here. So get um, that area on the bottom filled up with some more grass. The last thing I'm gonna demonstrate with this painting are the little fireflies. I think it gives it such a nice touch to the theme of this painting is light and summer and America. And what better to add little fireflies all throughout and it's 
that's a night painting, so it adds a really pretty touch to it. So when I do fireflies, I use my finger and I take my index finger and I dip it in the primary yellow. So I just take it, press it, and form a circle. And you can do this all throughout. You can add some in the grass. You can add some above and just kind of all wherever you want to have your little lights. And sometimes it's nice to put it in an area where there's not a lot going on. So there's a lot of blank space in that area. And then you can add a couple fireflies in there. Helps to balance your painting out a bit. And so there's our first layer of yellow. So you can tell it's not dim, it's not super bright, but then. We're going to go back over with another layer of white. So I'm going to take my brush and load it into white. And I just take that and I create a little white dot in the center. And you can take your finger and smear it out if you want a little bit and then add another white dot to it. That makes it super, super bright. So that little white dot makes your light glow. It's a little white dot. Take your finger, smear it, add another little white dot to it. Take your finger, smear it, add another little white dot. Such a simple technique. It creates a nice effect to our little fireflies. And this painting tutorial is pretty much coming to its conclusion. I love the simplicity of this design. It was a fun painting, a simple painting to do, a great one that do for the summer, for your patriotic holidays. We have Memorial Day coming up. It's a great one to have on display for the 4th of July. Just adding a few little last minute bright light details to this, to the sparklers. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and sign my name with that 5-0 round brush in the lower left hand corner. I'm just using titanium white and that little fine detail brush to sign my name. And I thank you for watching and thanks for painting with me.